Tonight's gonna be time to drink gin. We're having fun and we love to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Erica and Jason with Time to Shrink. Welcome back to our series that is now going to be called Time to Drink. Tonight's going to be Time to Drink Gin. Originally we thought this was just going to be a series for June, but we're really, really enjoying it and I find that I'm loving creating cocktails. So we're going to make it indefinitely every Friday night at six o'clock. So y'all come back every Friday night around six o'clock or not around, at, at six, six o'clock, and we will have a new episode. Some episodes are gonna be like you're seeing today in like the first three episodes, where we make a bunch of drinks and we just kinda of hang out and chat with y'all, and then some will be specific, like one drink, here's how to make this, so that we'll start creating a library of things where you can just go quickly how to make specific drinks, and we actually might throw in some lives as well, too, and make some things in chat. I've never done that before. Yeah, we're really we're excited. Gonna, yeah, yeah. All right, tonight is going to be all about gin. We are going to make four different gin drinks tonight, y'all. Four. One, two, three, four. Here we go. All right, let's talk about our gin choices. You can do a lot of different things with it, but the history of it just makes it such a variety of flavor. The history of gin basically is that it used to be called bathtub gin, right? Like in the yeah. 20s during prohibition, prohibition, people would make gin in their bathtub and it did not taste good. <laughs> so they made all of these different prohibition drinks basically to hide the flavor of gin. Well, there are so many new like Americanized gins and from other countries as well. Gin used to kind of be like what you think of as like the dry English gin where it's like you're tasting a Christmas tree and it's just so like alcoholy and not good. But we've discovered by buying a ton of different mini bottles that there are some that we really, really like. So the first thing that one that we got was this which I do not really care for, y'all. This came recommended. Like, we went yeah. to the liquor store, the guy said, this is really popular, you should try this one, so. Yeah, it's called Aviation American Gin. And the fact that it was American Gin made me a little more apt to say yes, but this one tastes pretty much like your basic super dry gin. You're not gonna get, like, a lot of botanical different elements from it. It's just that one you kind of want to cover up, in my opinion. This one is one that is popular with a ton of people. It's Bombay Sapphire, but again, it's the London Dry Gin. And that is just not my favorite, but it is a good middle of the road. It's not yeah. super expensive. It's, it's not super cheap. It's middle of the road. It's middle it's, of the road, it's right? Stuff. Yeah. Which is what we tend to do. We don't usually spend a lot of money on liquors that we're going to put into a drink because if you're going to mix it with make cocktails you don't want super high end but if you get really you low end you either. get what you pay for right. so middle we, of the road is good we probably stick with middle of the road so we took a bunch to try and these are the three that i have found that are my favorite so i'm just going to run through them real quick before we make our drinks okay this is a french gin it's i don't know how you say it is if it's esme or if it's a name i don't know but this one is very botanically. If you get a lot of botanical notes in this one, not just a straight hard liquor taste. So this one's pretty good. That would be my third favorite. These two are tied and I would use them for different things. Okay, this is a small batch. It's called Greenhouse Artisan Gin. This one is super, super botanically. I know I keep using that word, but I don't know how else to describe it. No, that's how you describe yeah, it. Yeah, and it's just, it's really, really good mixed with like cucumber or lemon. Really, really like this one. And then this one is more almost like a floral type gin. It's called Tans Gin. It says infused with 10 botanicals and distilled from grain, but I get more of a floral and I use this in more of the applications where I'm doing like a rose simple syrup or lavender or things like that. So those are my two favorite, but we're going to use up what we have before we buy more because Alcohol is expensive, y'all. <laughs> yeah, so we are just gonna jump right in now. I just kinda wanted to talk about gin first because I always thought I didn't like gin because all I had is like the London dry gins and I'm learning that I do like gin and some of these drinks are really, really good. All right, y'all, I had to sit down because I had to put my hair up and we just washed her today. So she is loud and proud tonight, y'all. All right, let's get making some gin drinks. What the first one is called a South Side, but we have renamed it the Down South Side because <laughs> we're down south because we've changed it up a bit. So I like to share variations with y'all, not just like a straight recipe that you would find off the internet, basically. So 
down south side is originally it would be gin, lemon juice, mint leaves, and a simple syrup, but we are adding cucumber to the mix. So first you would put five mint leaves and then you're going to put a couple cucumber slices right on top of that. And notice here we're using a glass pitcher. This is a specific bar pitcher, but you can use whatever you have. You could you, use a big old mason jar even. Right, what we got? An ounce of lemon juice? An ounce of lemon juice. Once we've added the lemon juice, we're going to lightly muddle it once again just to in infuse all those flavors. So we don't want to muddle the mint directly and break it up and have the little pieces of the bitter mint leaf in the drink. You're going to get the oils out of the mint leaf and that's really where the flavor is anyway. So the cucumber is kind of acting as a shield. We're infusing the cucumber juice into the mint, into the lemon right. juice. It works right. beautifully. Okay, now you're gonna do an ounce of simple syrup. As, what a simple syrup is, is one part water, one part sugar. To make it keto, I've been using allulose. So you use about one and a third cup of allulose to one part sugar, and then you can flavor them however you want. But this is our favorite store-bought one, and it's definitely nice to have on hand. All right, so an ounce of simple syrup. I believe we're gonna do two ounces of gin, and then we're going to start with ice. And then you want to make sure that you fill up your pitcher with ice, y'all. You want to put a ton because you don't want it to melt right on contact. You don't want it to melt quickly. So when, when you're going to stir it, you want to put your ice in rather quickly and you want to put a lot. Yeah. Mm, that was nice. Well, I'm going to let you finish your ice and prepare the glass here. So we're going to take... Um, I'm losing all my ice, y'all. No, I think gonna... we need a taller bar pitcher. Uh, we probably need that much, right? So we're gonna just kind of flavor the outside with the lemon oil here. And I'm just gonna drop that in there as our garnish. And y'all, all of these tools that we're using, we've pretty much bought all of them from Amazon. So I will link everything down below in case there's something y'all wanna try out. If you buy something through one of our links, we do get a small little kickback. It doesn't charge you any extra, but it does help us, which is handy because alcohol is not cheap, y'all. Doing these episodes has not been inexpensive expensive but we are loving it loving it you could float a cucumber right sure. on there or i don't even know what this martini glass if that'll work well we yeah, can get that way there we go it's like a martini yep. drop here so there is our down south side y'all let's give it a try is best with this greenhouse artisan gin the super botanically gin pairs so well with cucumber if you can find this one i highly highly recommend it i will totally be searching that one out yes i am in a new shirt, y'all. Yes, I'm Hot Mess Express, but hang on for later in the show to see why a cocktail video required a change of attire. Yeah, I'm Hot Mess Express, y'all. But before we jump into the next drink, I wanted to take a second and do a little shout out to my new friend over at Low Carb Cocktail Guy. He has a really great channel, y'all. He takes all kinds of cocktails and makes them low carb. He has done so much research to know that the things that he is making are in fact low carb. And I am learning some stuff from watching him. I'm really glad that I have found him. We actually are gonna be doing a collab here in the future coming up pretty soon in I think the first week of July. So be on the lookout for that one. All right, let's jump back into it, y'all. The next one, we're gonna do a gin and tonic, but we're gonna do a couple variations on it. So hang with me. This is gonna be called a rose hibiscus gin and tonic. I made a lot of my own simple syrups this week. I had a lot of fun creating simple syrups. One of them is a hibiscus rose simple syrup. I used hibiscus leaves. I used rose petals, both that were able to be eaten and I made a simple syrup out of it. So you're mm. gonna take an it smells ounce. smells so good. Look at that color too. Yeah, it's so pretty. I also used some hibiscus tea because I really wanted the good color. You're gonna use half an ounce of that. Half an ounce. Half an ounce. ounce. All right, and then you're gonna do an ounce of gin. And this is where I use that pink colored tans gin that I had showed y'all. I liked it in this drink a lot. But today we're gonna use the sapphire and go with an ounce of that. And then what you would do normally for a gin and tonic, obviously, is after you stir this with some ice and strain it into your glass, you would top it with tonic. But I switched it up, a diet tonic. A lot of people don't realize this, oh, but yeah. tonic water has so many carbs. Oh, yeah. So many. I've had clients tell me, I don't know why I get kicked out of ketosis when I drink gin and tonics, because there's nothing in it. Yeah, there's a lot. So diet tonic water. But I'm changing it up a little bit and using a champagne. 
Champagne is one of the lowest carb alcohols out there other than hard liquor. So it will work in this drink. You can put it in any kind of like old fashioned champagne glass or there's a lot of different glasses you could use for this drink. You just kind of want it to look 1920s vintage-y because it's, that's kind of where this drink came from, the gin and tonic from that period. So we're gonna put that in and then we are going to top it off with three ounces of champagne or three ounces of tonic. How cute is that, y'all? It's so pretty. Y'all know I love a pretty drink. I love this one. I really, really do. Hand me my little dry rosebuds. We're gonna pop a little rosebud on there, y'all. I went to my local health food store and found edible flowers. And I used it not only to make my syrup, but to garnish my drink. Very, very adorable. How cute is that? The next one we're gonna do is our variation of a French 75. So we are going to make a lavender simple syrup French 75. So you're going to need half an ounce of lemon juice and half an ounce of lavender simple syrup. All right, so here's your lavender simple syrup you made, kind of same way as the rose. Nice lavender uh, color to it. And this half is an ounce of lemon. fresh squeezed lemon. Yeah, you can use, mm. but it's, it's worth it to use fresher fresh. is fresher. I mean, yeah. And then you're going to add an ounce to an ounce 0.25. How much did you do? Ounce and a quarter. Okay. And then you're going to same procedure. You're going to stir this with ice. You're going to strain it into your glass and then you're going to top it with champagne. Let's see what we get here. And I love that we're getting to use all of my antique glasses. These were glasses that belonged to my grandmother and I love them. Okay, and this does have a little bit of a pink tinge to the glass, but not too much. And then you're just going to top it with champagne. And then, yeah. Again, super, super pretty. It doesn't, it comes out a little more pinkish in this glass than purple, but. What you think? I like that one the best of the three so far. Oh, I like this a lot and it's so pretty. I'm not sure what to decorate this one with. I guess Maybe we could do a, a little lemon twist. We could go around the edge like that. There you go. There we go. There you go. All right, y'all. Gin Fizz is next. This is Jason's favorite drink to make, and you oh, really yeah. like to drink this one. I too. like these drinks, yeah. yeah. All right, so Gin Fizz basically is gin, lemon, simple syrup, and egg white. It makes it really, really frothy and a really pretty drink. We are going to shake this one because of the egg white. It's right. going to give it that froth. This is the exception where you have to shake gin if you do an egg white. So I would say if you're going to make a Gin Fizz, use one that doesn't have a lot of different notes to it because when you shake it at least that's what i read was that when you shake it when it oxygenates you lose some of the different botanical flavors if you have one of the newer american gins with lots of notes to it that's what i've learned anyways so what he's doing is an ounce of lemon and 0.75 ounces of simple syrup and then he's going to do two ounces of gin and i also learned someone said i've seen this a couple of places like what order to put your stuff in your drink that you should kind of, if it's not something that needs to be muddled, you go from the least expensive ingredient to the most expensive ingredient is what I heard. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm learning. I'm not a cocktail gal, but I'm becoming one, y'all. I'm loving doing this. I really, really am. All right. This is called a dry shake. We're actually going to shake this twice, once dry with no ice. And then we're going to open it up, dump some ice in there and shake it again. Okay. You can also do it in the reverse order and it actually makes it a little bit more frothy um, to do it in the reverse order. There are two ways to do it. Okay. I've only heard of this way to do it. This is the dry shake. All right. And then we're just going to strain this out. And Again, just whatever glass you think it's pretty for this. I thought this one was very 1920s looking. Right, and it's nice to have the clear glass just right. because of all of the... Yeah, I didn't want to use one of my antiques pink ones because of the color of the string. Okay, so gin fizz, and then just kind of the same thing. Get, what is this called? The rind of a lemon without the pith. And you just kind of twist it to activate the oils, go around, and then you just put your little twist right on top. And or it done. just sinks on down in, y'all. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, so good. You like that one? Even with the gin and the rosemary. All right, y'all. So, yes, I have a new shirt on. <laughs> what are we? You're doing Jason's yes, doing uh, drinks. I feel like drinks. I need to, like, talk about the elephant in the room. Y'all, <laughs> if you've watched me for very long, y'all know that I'm the Hamas Express over here. I thought I could get through a cocktail segment. <laughs> 
without being Hot Mess Express, but Not so much. last episode I almost knifed my face. Earlier in this episode, right here on our little I cut my arm. arm and I arm and I didn't realize I actually cut it and I got blood all over my other shirt. So there was like no way to not no change. blood in the drinks. So no, no blood, blood in the drinks because Jason was making the drinks and I was over here. <laughs> but yeah, y'all. Well, so new shirt. We can Take promise. Two. We can promise really good cocktails. <laughs> we cannot promise that everything's gonna be perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. All right. Anyways, thanks for hanging out. We will see y'all again next Friday at six o'clock for more keto cocktails or time to drink with time to shrink. Bye y'all, be blessed.